I'm not Father Simon. Today, there's four points. Number one is the Holy Family with the feast we are celebrating, 2017, 2018, and New Year's resolutions. Jesus, as you know, spent three hours on the cross. He spent less than three years in public ministry and spent 30 years in his family's care, working as a carpenter, and emphasized and underlines the virtue of obedience. Jesus Christ obeyed his mother and his stepfather. It was, Joseph obviously was not his biological father. He was perfectly obedient in all ways. And that is a huge lesson for us on this feast of the Holy Family. There is uh, very rare exceptions to this. There are exceptions. They're very rare. Take, the, the exception is the person who came to see me in my 20 years as a priest who had an awful parent that I gave permission not to contact their parent. Once, once, the rest of us, how are we doing with our families? Can we spend more time with our families? Can we get our kids? I know it's hard, not having children, it's easy for me to say this. Can I rip that thing out of my kid's hand for five minutes when I'm talking to him over a meal? I don't know how you fathers put up with it. As a male alpha, whatever you want to call me, if I'm sitting and talking, you pull out computers, I'm done with you, sorry. Unless you have, a, unless you got, a, maybe you got some. Maybe, maybe I got to help you. You might, you might need some addiction therapy or a, a support group. But family is family. It's, it's not going to change. Hey, people who go to confession regularly. Okay, that's, that's not most of you. <laughs> people who go to confession regularly, they actually state in their opening, if, whether they're married or whether they're single. Some even confess. Bless me for life. I've sinned. I'm a priest. I always say that, but I always know the person I'm going to confession to, which is never Father Simon or from Monsignor Hermes. I usually go to a priest with Alzheimer's, but that's another point. People go to confession and they tell their state of life. Why would they do that, Father? Because it changes everything. It changes, not the state of life. It changes how the priest responds to you. You're married, you got kids. You're, it makes a big difference. So. What's the point? Jesus models for us. So does the Blessed Virgin Mary and Joseph. It's really all about family. Well, look, when I die, when you die and you get judged by God, don't you think that's going to be a major lens through which God looks through to see how you really did? Not what the people next door thought. Not what the people on Facebook think. What does your mother think? My, I lost my father 30 years ago. I still miss my father. Boys love their fathers. Boys love their mothers. <laughs> You're supposed to love your mother and your father. <laughs> and the devil is so good. He's distracted so many people. It's your mother. It's your dad. And I know they're imperfect. Who's, who's perfect here? You're supposed to love them. And I, and I said this again. I, I, if my father was in the penitentiary and he was still alive, I'd go visit him. Unless he killed my mother, but it's another story. You gotta look out. You gotta make sacrifices. Wait, when, when does the kid start becoming an adult? When they stop thinking about themselves and making family first. God, family. Let's throw in some patriotism here. So anyway, it's about the Holy Family. For those who continue to bring your kids to church, God bless you. You are arming them with a spiritual treasure they will certainly, certainly uh, need as the years go by. And for those whose kids don't go and grandkids don't go, in the new year, in one way you keep praying, but emotionally you gotta let it go. It drives you, it drives me, and it drives all of us who go to church and love our Lord and Savior. It hurts us and it, 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 it doesn't have to diminish us, but we love our family. And when we chose by the gift of grace, the greatest possible decision, I wanna be one with Christ. I want Christ to lead my life. And the people I love do not agree with me. It hurts. And they have no compassion for us. They have zero compassion for their, in general, in general, for their grandmother or their mother. Baptize your kids, mom, wait till they get older. That's a really dumb idea. Why is that a dumb idea, Father? Because Dad thinks that a culture is neutral. That somehow there's this organic, what, 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 what a gerarium, gerarium? Gerarium, there's an organic gerarium where kids just grow up and then when they're old enough, they get to decide. What about consumerism? What about materialism? What about all the ways the internet and media and culture are infecting our children? What 
makes you think a kid left to his own devices without religious instruction or formation is going to turn 17 or 18 one day and choose Christ? That's a stupid thought. It's possible. But how about the old-fashioned way? Take our kids to church. Take your kids to church. I had a friend in the Peace Corps. He never went to church with me. Five years older than me. Born the same day as me. He never would go to church. Never go to church. And after a while, he had kids later in life. He still doesn't go to church. And you know what I told him? I said, Tom, this is between Tom and I, because we're friends. I don't care what you believe. This is a hardcore message, and I'm sorry to tell, say it to you, but I'm going to tell you what I told Tom. Tom, I don't care if you don't believe nothing at all. Go anyway. Go for your wife. Go for your kids. It's important. It's an hour. And the Catholics are convinced that Jesus Christ actually left us this ritual as an intimacy with him. That he comes inside of us, that we are one together. We're not just a family of, of genetically uh, engineered people. We're, we're, we're a family by the blood of Christ. We've been adopted into this glorious, holy family. And it's important, it has a value. Okay, 2017, I don't know, this is not a lot of people. This is just Father Drums, it's my, my homily, 2017. I had an awesome year. I had a phenomenal year. And, I, and people died, we'll get to that. It's not, not, a, not a good year for everybody. People lost jobs, people got divorced, but people have been betrayed, people buried mothers, fathers. The woman who does our recording, her daughter who just got married, son, found out today lost his mother. She might not be 50. So there's sorrow all around. I'll get to the sorrow, but I, don't, I, I want a balanced approach here. I went to, to Normandy. I went to Omaha Beach on a pilgrimage. I went to Rome twice. I went to the Anzio Military Cemetery, which is the second largest military cemetery, I was gonna say seminary, cemetery in uh, Europe. There's about 3,800 uh, people buried, 18 sets of brothers, women who are high profile nurses who were killed either in Sicily or in southern Italy, and uh, another 3,500 people missing from that, from that war, uh, from Sicily into, in, in, into um, southern Italy. It, my father was at, at Normandy. I'm so proud of my country. I pray for my military. When I take people to Rome, after a while, when I deal with people, when it got, with, with, with the faith, with, with the origins of the church, how Christ started the church, when I go to Rome and you could touch, feel, and see history, and you still deny, nobody here. But at that point, I think intellectually dishonest. Because I, I could touch, I could see, I could show you the tomb of St. Peter. I could take you to the catacombs of Calixtus where at one point 500,000 bodies were buried. Because the Christians didn't burn bodies, the Romans did. They buried them. Not all were martyrs, all were Christians. And they were buried for hundreds of years under Roman occupation. Well, it was Rome. But they outlawed Christianity. I could show you them. And it builds up my faith, and, and, and it's wonderful to see. Um, living at home with my brothers, Father Simon and, 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 and Father Monsignor Hermes and Father William, it's been awesome. What keeps that house popping is we all agree Jesus Christ is Lord. We all agree that we should live spirit-led lives. We're very sensitive and conscious, at least the three of us, under Monsignor Hermes. We have an awesome parish due to his leadership. We're also sensitive and conscious, Monsignor and I, every parish should be like this one. Adoration chapel, rock and music, people volunteering all over the place, selfless service, people taking communion to the sick, caring for the elderly, the homebound, the nursing homes. This is a great parish. Um, so uh, the day after Christmas, I was on duty, don't cry for me, Argentina. Uh, Christmas, went home, came back, and uh, we had a lot of gifts. I'm not able to thank all of you for all your gifts. Uh, Monsignor Hermes writes, individual thank you cards. It's, it's, it's amazing. I don't know how, it's, it's amazing. I have a confession to make, and it's, I gave it already, and they were nice and gentle with me. I hope you're nice and gentle with me. But up to this point, my thank you cards have always been written by my mother. <laughs> it's true. And this year, I opened up my cards with her. Uh, she's not able to write them anymore. So, uh, but that's true. And I'm highlighting one senior's sacrificial uh, 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 Thanksgiving. Where, I, where, I, where me, I needed help. 
And to all, of, to all those who've given and gave, I probably won't get around to everybody. I'm gonna do the best I can. Uh, you were over, overwhelmingly generous in this parish, overwhelmingly generous. I went to Haiti this year. I get people signed up for Rome. Nobody wants to go to Haiti. Father, why do you want to take people to Haiti? Because I want them to see with their own eyes the poorest to the poor and the hope and the joy in these young people. It may, it, you know what it would do if nothing else? It would help you reevaluate the structures within your own family. You're like, how do these kids who have nothing have so much fun? And my kids got everything. And, doesn't, and she doesn't know how to entertain herself. She's constantly looking for the, anyway, I want to go off on a tangent. Um, so all these gifts, food and cookies and all this stuff. So somebody gave us these very attractive canisters of moose, okay? They got ribbons on them, they're moose. I kept going by them in the kitchen, I'm looking at them, I don't wear moose. I'm, this is another full disclosure. The only time I put gel in my hair or something is for mass with you or when I'm in Italy. Why in Italy? Because I'm always looking for a job. <laughs> I'm always like I'm interviewing. I shave every day and I put gel in my head. That's what you do when you're in Italy. You never know. Maybe someone says, hey, Father Joe, maybe you want to work for the Vatican. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> maybe I'll be a food tester for the Pope. Here, try this. Okay, have a little more. No, no, just taste it. Don't eat the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm in a hurry, and, I, and I, again, I'm, I, I, I'm an honest man. I want to be honest. It's a new year. And, and before I tell what happened, which was kind of funny, I want to ask for forgiveness, too, for the last year. I couldn't have got around to all of you. It's not possible. If, and, and, and it was never intentional. If I didn't return a phone call, if I missed something, it was never intentional. It was never personal. It was just, I, I, I'm doing, trying to do the best I can here. So I finally, I'm going somewhere and I'm cheating on you because I'm going to take the moose. So I don't know what's going on. I had a bad hair day. I'm, I'm so I go upstairs I, and they're very, I can't underscore sufficiently how attractive these canisters are. Whoever's selling this kind of moose knows what they're doing. It's, they're French. It's French company. So I take the moose. I'm, no one's home. I'm sneaking around and nobody's home. There's something wrong with me. It's the moose thing. So I was, I was nervous, cheating on you, putting gel in my hair. So I go upstairs and I take the moose, I put it in my hand, I go like this, I put it in my hair. It's a French company. I look closely. You know what it says? Mousse de Razor. It's shaving cream. I thought it was mousse. Now I'm late. And I got shaving cream in my hair. Yes, I'm Polish. It's okay. I lived like this my whole life. So whoever gave us the canister, you can identify yourself now or later, that was not funny. If you're going to give me French, Shaving cream, put on there in English, shaving cream. Because mousse in French, it means like cream, and it's the next word that gives meaning to the, thank you, to, to what the mousse is. Okay, so most importantly about 2017, which hope is a theme for the rest of my life, is worshiping with you in this parish at this altar. That's my 2017. Having mass with you, being with you. Uh, to, to all the deceased and all the dying, this week alone, I've anointed two 101-year-old ladies. To this week alone, a 93-year-old woman. Now, the family claims she was going under the knife. I got to the, to the hospital around 8 o'clock uh, a.m. This was about five days ago. She went under the knife with a blood clot. The doctors came back, said there was nothing there. They found nothing. They consider it miraculous. And I, the family thinks so, so I'm going to help them. I'm taking full credit. <laughs> yes, I am. Another miracle, another miracle. Okay, so uh, the worshiping with you, huge point. Oh, so 48 hours ago, I'm at Fair Oaks. Remember there was supposed to be a snowstorm that came. They keep amping up our snowstorms, which you gotta get used to the news, I guess. It's a new age, like four inches. So I'm like, four inches, no way. So I race to the, to the nursing home. Now, not out of good motivation, not because I'm a great priest, I want to miss the snowstorm. Hello. So I get there. I know I got till eight because she's being transferred to hospice. She's going to die. She's 84 years old. So the, the daughter, the mother asked the daughter to leave the room. Beautiful daughter taking care of her mother, um, which I have to stress. The daughter's taking care of their mothers. Let me get, get me back to that point. So she says to me, I, I'm going to die soon. 
I said, I know. She goes, you know, I lost a daughter from cancer about 20 years ago. She was in her late 30s, and I miss her dearly. And she starts shedding a tear. I'm going to see her soon. She was my favorite. <laughs> I'm glad the other daughter was out of the room. And I said, what about your husband? And she said, he died about a year and a half ago. I'm going to see him too. It was powerful. She, had every, she wasn't on drugs. Because a lot of people are getting pain maintenance in hospitals. She was very clear-eyed and very certain that Jesus Christ was the reason for living and God was the purpose for, what, for, for, for this existence and that life everlasting was real. I looked into the eyes of a dying woman who, who bore forth for me eternity. And it's real. And back to the, the people. There's been a lot of sufferings, a lot of sorrows, a lot of sadness. Do you know how many people I have witnessed take care of their family members in their darkest and most dire hours? It's overwhelmingly impressive. My mother's sick. She's getting sicker. Just pray for her. Don't ask me because when thousands of people ask me, it gets uncomfortable. But just pray for her. But I will tell you this much. What I saw, what I've seen in this parish with people taking care of their parents and their children and children taking care of their parents, you've paved the way for me. I love hanging around my mom. Even if I just watch her sleep, if I watch her drink her coffee, I'm a happy guy. I don't need much. And she gave me everything. Look out for your families. And if you're 50 or older, or even a little younger, it's coming. This, those pharmaceuticals, sorry, this is my own tangent. I'm sure they're keeping us alive longer. I don't know how much healthily longer. It's been my humble experience, there's one priest, I just do the nursing homes and hospitals. Alzheimer's and memory loss and dementia are a lot more common today than they ever were. We'll talk about that in another homily. The point is, it's coming. People are living longer, they're living less, uh, you know, there's more debilitation as they get older, so it's coming. 2017, 2018, um, I, I don't know how you want to mark your 2018. Let's start with this. Would you leave, please, leave, please, not, not church. <laughs> Leave please behind all the weeds of 2017 and stop giving them water. Something had to bother all of us in 2017. We're all bothered by something. We all give undue attention to some negative happening in our lives or something we wish would have went left that went right or went right and went left. We gotta stop giving water to those weeds. We gotta, we gotta attempt to start pulling those weeds up and thanking the Lord for just so much. Look, in the first reading, he talks about faith. Uh, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Our faith is like a vision. It's not just human reason. Faith is a supernatural gift. It's a vision. It's a way of, look. for example, uh, don't mention his name, a 55-year-old man had, had colon cancer, it went away, he had colon cancer, it went away, then it went to his brain. This is about two weeks ago, 50, 54, 55 years old. He's gotta go to the hospital for brain surgery. And, and the family, his daughters are there, his wife is there, his mother's there, they're all crying. First words that came out of my mouth, because of my faith. You're with your family. It took them a second to get it, but they got it. People die alone all the time. People die in tragedies all the time. People die in nursing homes. Um, there's a woman who just died. Her kid was walking in the snow for, for a day. And then the woman, they found the woman dead for 24 hours. You're with your family. Yes, it's hard. Uh, I buried a man this year about a month ago. The, the mother lost three children. Buried three children. The third guy died of uh, diabetes in his 50s. And in the, in the interview with the family, the, well, Joe, who goes to parish with us, Joe and Mary, if he's at Mass, he, you know this story. Joe said to me, please don't use the word death. I've been a priest almost 19 years. Don't use the word death, your brother's dead. He said, would you please use the word passed on? That's beautiful. Yeah, I got it. I'm open to learning new information. My brother's not dead, he passed on. My father's not dead. He passed on. You're dead relatives. Stop making them so dead. They're alive. And I got news for you. They're not probably. They're definitively. Check out my theology later, John. They're more alive than we are. Because they're fully alive in the spirit. So, let's end this homily. Make faith part of 2018. Grow it. Do what you got to do. And with your family, do me a favor. I'm going to keep 
I can't use that word. I'm going to keep giving people a hard time. I had four older brothers. My dad was who he was. That's just how I'm wired. I can lighten up a little bit. I can slow down a little bit. But I'm just not the way I am. Be nice to your families who don't go to church. Try something different in 2018. Try something different. You already tried how to nag them in the church. It ain't working. Try just smiling at them. You should try it for one year, a whole year. You get a pass from the priest. Well, 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 why don't you tell your kids to go to Mass? I've been telling my kids to go to Mass since they were little children. They don't want to go. Now they're 19 or 20 or 30. Now they don't want to go to Mass. I'm just going to smile. If they want to ask me, I'll tell them. Otherwise, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pers persecute them or, or tell them what they're missing. I'm just going to be a joyful Christian, and hopefully they learn from my example. Fourth point of the homily, New Year's resolutions, shorter homilies. 